welcome to the 20 games challenge. Let's assume you want to learn to make a video game. Where do you begin? Obviously, you'd probably start with a tutorial, but let's say you've put in your two or six or 40 hours, however long it took to make something extremely simple. And now you have the most basic mechanics of the game engine you're using under your belt, but you are not by any means an expert. What comes next? A lot of people will move straight into their dream game, the reason why they wanted to learn to make video games in the first place. Unfortunately, video games are really difficult to make. They are much easier than they've ever been before. We are in an amazing time if you want to learn, but it's still difficult. And the majority of people fail to finish their first project that they start. So what do we do about that? If you ask around the internet, you will start to get the same advice over and over again. Start small, make multiple projects, and work your way up to something big. Maybe instead of making that dream game, you're going to start with some other idea you have that you're not as committed to, but it should be easy, right? The one problem is, if you don't know how to make a video game, how are you going to know how to estimate how big a video game is? How are you going to know that this idea you have is actually small instead of just seeming small on the surface? And what happens when you find yourself two years and three prototypes into a project that you didn't really care about to begin with, but you just thought it was small and it turns out it's not? There is one other option that a lot of people are interested in, and that is game jams. Essentially, if you want to learn to make a video game, you can hold yourself up in a room for 24, 48, or 72 hours and just do what you know and make something and get it out there in front of people. At the end of the jam, you have finished a project. And that's great. It's not for everyone. Again, if you don't have 24 or 48 or 72 consecutive hours to dedicate to a jam, you might not even be able to do that, but it does work for some people. So is that our only option? Game jams, only way to learn games? No, there is another option that a lot of people do, but not a lot of people talk about, and it hasn't really had a fancy name, which is why I decided to make a website about it. That idea is recreating games that already exist. And that'll sound weird to a lot of people who might want to get into games because they want to express their creativity. But if you want to be creative, you need to at least know the fundamentals. This isn't about unleashing your inner Picasso. It is about learning to hold a paintbrush. The goal of the 20 games challenge is not necessarily to make 20 games, although you can. The goal is to learn game design in 20 games or less. Now again, 20 games sounds like a lot, but ask yourself the question, if you were going to learn to play an instrument, how many songs would you have to play? If you were to learn to draw or paint, how many drawings or paintings would you have to make before you'd consider yourself good enough to make art that other people will take seriously? So that's what this challenge is about. You are starting with fundamentals. The idea is for this to be very flexible. So if you have ideas, if you want to mix things in, if you want to do game jams, that all works. You don't have to be locked in. This isn't a class. This isn't a tutorial. Uh, really, this the syllabus that you can take and adapt and use on your own. So the way you'll go do this is you'll go to this page. There is some help. There's some how it works. A few things to get you started. The main link here is the challenge page. There will be a list of 10 games. Actually, there will be a list of much more than 10, but they will be in tabs and you're going to take them one at a time. So if you want to start, you start here at game one and you can pick. You want to make Pong, Flappy Bird, Doodle Jump. I just have three games for now. I may add more in the future, but you pick one of these. Let's say Pong. And you have a fixed goal. If you can accomplish these things on the list, if you can make a arena with two paddles and a ball that bounces and it tracks scores when you exit one end of the arena or the other, you have made Pong. And you can say that you have successfully completed this video game. And here's a difficulty estimate, uh, how complex it is. That means what is the technical details you're going to need. Scope is how much stuff you're going to make. Are you going to be making a bunch of art? Are you going to be making your own music? Are you going to be drawing things? Are you going to be making sprite work? All of that adds to the scope, even if it doesn't add to the complexity. So complexity means you're going to have to think hard. Scope means you're going to have to work hard. But combined, that's going to tell you how big these games are. You can expect to be making a lot of these first games in, I'd say, 20 hours or less assuming you have some basic knowledge of you followed a tutorial once before. It can be a lot longer and that's okay. The thing is this can be flexible. You can learn good habits. If you want to do one hour a day and when you finish a game, you move on to the next one, that's okay. If you want to try a game in a weekend, you can try that too. But the idea is to slowly build your way up by recreating classic games. And when you're ready to jump off that train, if you say that you know how to make games when you're done, then you've completed the 20 games challenge. 
So if you go all the way down to the bottom, you might be trying to make Doom or Mario Kart or Minecraft. And that may sound impossible if you've never made a video game. But if you start at the top and you walk your way down, you will gain the steps you need as you go. Game two actually builds directly on game one. If you've made Pong, the next step, you can go to Breakout. And that one is Pong, but with extra steps. The complexity doesn't even really change. You just have a little bit more scope and you just need to add some things to the game you already made and you get a new game. From there, maybe you're gonna start completely over if you wanna make Frogger. Eventually you'll get to things like Pac-Man and learn how to make some basic AIs. Again, this challenge is not a tutorial. I'm not gonna be teaching how to make these things. And really the idea is that you don't look at a tutorial. If you have questions, look on the internet in general, find answers. If you really need to look at a tutorial for this game in particular, watch it all the way through. Don't go step by step because that isn't really the same thing as learning, but watch the tutorial, set it aside, come back to the game, work on it, or find specific questions online. Learning to Google is a huge skill for game design. So if you can answer those specific questions without finding a tutorial for this game in particular, that'll help. But the idea is that you're going to be working your way up. Once you've completed the first 10 games, then you're going to move into phase two, which is game 11 and beyond. You will have a much larger list to select from. The idea is to figure out where you want to go. What kind of games do you want to make? Are you interested in making a real-time strategy? Well, maybe we're going to start with a tower defense and we're going to work our way up, but you've already made a first-person shooter, so you have a lot of experience with games. You're going to work your way in. So you can tailor this however you want. Uh, you can add in your own projects um, if you want to do a capstone if you want to make something completely original part way through once you realize you know how to estimate the scope you can start doing that you can throw in game jams like whatever works for you works but the idea is that this is a free resource i'm putting out to help people learn to make games in the way that i learned and it has been extremely useful for me so i hope it is for you uh, full transparency i am on game number 10 currently i have been thinking about and developing the challenge as I've been making games. I am actively working on the website. I actually don't have all the games filled out at the time of making this video, but I am trying to get them done as quick as I can. I haven't made all these games, but I will be estimating complexity and scope based off of the games I have made and doing research. I'm gonna have a little bit of background information on each game and some other stuff. One final note I do have for feedback, this is going to be free and open source and all that stuff. So if you are interested in helping make the website great, feel free uh, to either jump in on GitLab or hit me up on Discord. If you are interested in doing the challenge, I would love to hear how that goes for you. If you are making devlogs or tutorials on your own, either a video or blog post, feel free to let me know. I am adding mine to the challenge here under this section, but I would love to showcase what other people have done as well. So that was it for this video, super quick, but I just wanted to say thank you for watching. I thank you for being a part of this journey. And if you want to take on the challenge for yourself, jump on in and let me know. I'd love to hear how it goes.